we'll be demonstrating a knee examination. Starting out, the first thing we're going to do is look, basically observe and inspect the knees and the surrounding musculature. So starting out, we want to look at the patient. We're going to examine the iliac crest, just looking at height and general position. We're going to follow down and look at the bulk of the quadriceps muscles. We could measure each side to specifically get a value that we can compare. Coming down further, we're looking at the knees. In general, we're looking for any deformities, any scars, any swelling that we might see. And as we go down further here, we're actually going to look at the feet. So uh, I'd actually have uh, Lindsay here uh, maybe lie on the table. Just for a sec here. Okay, perfect. So looking at the feet, um, what we're looking for is forefoot, any varus or valgus deformities. Uh, once again, we can examine the knees in this position. And then we're actually going to have you flip over onto your stomach for a sec. So why don't you go face down? And this way we're able to observe the back of the knees once again for any swelling or, or scars. We're able to follow down and looking at the rear foot here, we can see whether there's any varus or valgus deformities. And lastly, as we follow kind of the line of the musculature back up, looking at the hamstrings and looking at the glutes to see if the bulk of the musculature is symmetrical between both sides. So that's a basic observation and inspection. Now let's move on to palpation. So we've got our patient here lying flat on their back in supine position, knees bent at 90 degrees. First off, we're going to look at the patella. So we're going to palpate, you know, from lateral and medial, inferior, superior. We're going to palpate the quadriceps tendon here. And then we're also going to go down here to the patellar tendon or ligament, depending on how you call it. And then also the tibial tuberosity. We're going to palpate there. Having the patient at 90 degrees will allow us to palpate behind the knee in the popliteal fossa, looking for, you know, any swelling or tenderness. And we could also bring the leg down, and this way it'll allow us to glide that patella back and forth a little bit to see what the movement is like or if there's, you know, any catching maybe or something on the, uh, the posterior surface of the patella. So that would be a general uh, palpation of the knee. Now we'll be looking at active range of motion and passive range of motion of the knee. So starting out, we'll have the patient uh, perform the active motion. So Lindsay, if you could just show me some knee flexion there. Perfect, as far as you can go and then back down. Nice, and let's do the other side. And something I should mention is everything we're doing, we're always comparing left and right. So we'll be checking both sides if the patient were here in the clinic being examined for knee pain. Okay, now that we've done it actively, I'm gonna passively do the same motion here. So I'm just going to have you go into flexion. So normal range would be up to about 140 degrees of flexion. And then we're coming back down into extension. And with extension, it would be zero degrees. If we were to see uh, hypermobility or something going on here in the knee where we would get an extension past zero degrees, anything uh, past 10 degrees would be considered abnormal. Another thing to note here is while I'm doing this, for example, as I was going through this range of motion, I'm also feeling for any crepitus, any grinding sensations in the knee, but I'm also assessing temperature. If it was elevated or hot on one side versus the other, it might be indicative of some kind of arthritic process. Now, before we get into the orthopedic tests, I just wanna do a quick anatomy review. So I've got a model here. First off, you can see the patellar tendon, and behind it here is the patella. If we open up the joint space here, we've got the femur above and the tibia below. And let me just move this maybe out of the way like that. So this ligament here would be your ACL, and this is your PCL. And then we've got the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. If we turn this sideways, this would be the medial collateral ligament, and this one here would be your lateral collateral ligament. And that's just a posterior view. You can see the, the epicondyles of the femur here and the ligaments as well from a posterior view. So that's the basic uh, knee anatomy right there. Now let's demonstrate some orthopedic testing. First off, we're gonna test the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. So we're gonna bend uh, Lindsay's knee here. I'm gonna sit on the side of her foot a bit just to anchor everything into place, gripping behind the, the tibia here, posterior aspect of the knee, and I'm pulling towards me. And what I'm feeling for is any movement of that tibia towards me in relation to the femur. So that's testing the ACL. Now, another way to do this is with the knee slightly bent, probably around 30 degrees. 
uh, we're going to basically, with the bottom hand, we're pulling the tibia anterior towards me and we're bracing with the other hand. And once again, we're looking for any movement of that tibia in relation to the femur. Another way to do it is to put your knee underneath the back of the knee. That'll offer a bit of support. I prefer this method personally. We're gonna stabilize the femur here, gripping the tibia again, and we're pulling anteriorly. Good. So now, once we've assessed the knee in that position, to differentiate and make sure that the laxity is not coming from, say, the PCL versus the ACL, we're gonna test the PCL now, the posterior cruciate ligament. So for that, we're bending and we're going to stabilize either with our thumbs. I like to use my thenar right on top of the tibial tuberosity. And we're going to push that tibia back towards the table. And once again, we're assessing to see if there's any laxity with that tibia moving in that direction. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to test, um, we're going to place some valgus and varus stress on the knee. So we're going to check the medial collateral ligament first. So with that, we're gonna create a, a valgus stress. I'm gonna brace the knee here. With this bottom hand, I'm gonna pull the lower part of the leg towards me while I push forward with my top hand. And that way we're stressing the MCL. And you can do this at about 30 degrees, but you can also do it with the leg down on the table. And then we're gonna create a varus stress to test the LCL, the lateral collateral ligament. So I'm gonna to step to the inside support the leg with mine. I'm going to put the hand here and we're creating a varus stress by pulling down on the lower extremity while pushing forward on the knee. And then we can also do that at a slight bend here around 30 degrees. There we go. Good. Okay, and that's the basic orthopedic test for the major ligaments of the knee. So now let's take a look at the menisci. We're going to go through some orthopedic tests to really evaluate the lateral and the medial meniscus. So first off, what we find really works well and is actually backed up by a lot of research is just joint line tenderness. There's a high correlation between joint line tenderness and meniscus problems. So first off, if we were to palpate the, uh, the lateral meniscus, we'd find the joint line and we'd really get in there in between the femur and the tibia and just kind of palpate. How's that? Okay, Lindsay, not hurting you. Uh, it's minorly tender on that side, okay. but not, not And then we'd move to the medial meniscus. So we actually look at this knee here because you can see it a lot easier. So once again, we're going to find the joint line right in there. And once again, we're, we're getting in there and just palpating and assessing for any joint line tenderness. Doing okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, good. So now we'll have you lie uh, flat on your back here in supine position. So moving from the joint line, what we're going to do is just assess a uh, uh, general movement here of the knee. So uh, as we go into external rotation, we're going to be stressing that lateral meniscus and internal rotation of the tibia would be more the medial meniscus. So first off, just going to do some range of motion here. Actually, let me hold you this way. There we go. And at the same time, you can palpate the joint line and just assess for tenderness. And then if we go back the other way, I'm actually going to come to the medial aspect. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So transitioning from here, we could actually go into McMurray's test. So basically we're gonna to start to extend the knee and create varying degrees of internal or external rotation as we're palpating the joint line. So we're gonna go down further. Yeah, you doing okay? Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna go back and we go the other way with some external rotation. One down again, good. Just palpating through here. Okay, good. So now, uh, let's actually have you go face down. So you're gonna go prone. And so what we'll do here is called the, the Apley's test. So we're gonna bend the knee, and this gives us the mechanical advantage because we're gonna be able to push down in towards the joint compressing the meniscus and we're going to create either external internal rotation and assess uh, and it's kind of a c motion on either side so if we were to go this way we're just going to kind of do that c motion and at the same time you get your hand down in here and, and palpate different aspects of the joint there we go doing okay uh -huh. and now going to the inside we do the same idea 
I'm gonna palpate and we're gonna come this way. Good. Good. Okay. And then sometimes I'll also just put a pressure into the joint and just externally and internally rotate the tibia just to see if that elicits any discomfort. Okay, so now actually let's have you stand. So you're gonna maybe stand in the corner here. So this next test is called the Thessalies. And so what this does is it'll load the joint in a weight bearing position. And that way we can analyze and see if there's anything going on with the meniscus. So I'm gonna have you stand on one leg and then I'm gonna rotate your torso here and we're gonna put stress. So by turning you this way, we're stressing the lateral meniscus and turning you that way, we're stressing the medial. So I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit. Good, doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And relax there. And then uh, one thing, if deemed appropriate during the examination, if, if it's not a contraindication, to load the posterior aspects of the menisci, you can actually have your patient perform a duck walk. So if you're willing there, Lindsay, and have you squat down and just walk like a duck. Perfect. Great. Okay. And that uh, completes general assessment of the menisci. When assessing for patellofemoral knee pain, there's some specific orthopedic tests that we can do. First off, I'd start with palpation. So you, know, you, just, uh, you can actually straighten your leg a bit. So you're gonna palpate the lateral and medial aspects of the patella, you know, getting underneath a little bit, assessing for any tenderness. Yeah. And you can even create a little bit of patellar glide back and forth and up down a bit just to see if there's any crepitus or a grinding sensation. Okay, and then moving on from there, it's easy to just palpate down further along the patellar tendon. So if you have, you bend your knee there a little bit, Lindsay. So we find the patellar tendon and we're going to palpate on the lateral and medial side and we're gonna follow it down towards its insertion right here on the ischial uh, tuberosity. Did I say ischial? On the tibial tuberosity. Uh, and so if there were tendonous right here, on either side, we could say that that's a positive uh, Hoffa's fat pad sign. If you have a young person, especially an adolescent who's quite athletic and they complain of tenderness here along the uh, tibial tuberosity, then that's indicative of Oshkut Schlatter's uh, disease. So now if we um, bring the leg back down, okay, so the last thing here that we can do is called Clark's test, where we're going to have Lindsay uh, basically tense up the quad. So do that actually. There you go. So you can see as, as Lindsay tenses up her quad, the patella translates superiorly. So what we're gonna do is have you relax. I'm gonna place my hand here and basically resist the movement of the patella uh, superiorly. So have you tense up the quad again? Good. And relax. You can relax now, yeah. And then try it a couple more times. Okay. Good, and one last one. Okay. So if there were any pain as uh, Lindsay tenses the quad with that patella translating superiorly, that would be a positive test for a, a patella problem. Now we're going to examine the knee looking for any effusion or swelling that may be indicative of a Baker cyst, a bursitis, uh, maybe an arthritic condition. So this is really based on anatomy. So looking at the inferior pole here of the patella, kind of right in through here is where we'd have that prepatella bursa. So we're looking for any tenderness, uh, it might be a little bit inflamed. We're going to look at the pes anserine uh, tendon insertion when we turn the leg out this way, following those tendons down right into this area here, kind of palpate there once again, feeling for any inflammation, swelling, tenderness, and then we'll bring the, the leg back here. Now we're going to palpate behind the knee in the popliteal fossa. So to get our fingers in there, you might feel a, a palpable mass, uh, almost like a little ball back there. It's usually not too tender, but mechanically can cause a lot of problems for the patient. Now, one thing to recognize with a, a Baker cyst is that it's really not the problem, but more indicative of an underlying problem. And that could be uh, an arthritic knee or a torn meniscus where fluid will seep through between the uh, gastroc and the hamstrings and, and form a little pouch. Uh, often we'll have our patients go back to their medical doctors and have it assessed. In some cases, they may choose to drain it, but a lot of cases they won't because the surgeons actually want to identify what the underlying cause is rather than drain it and have it recur all the time. Having said that, draining it in some cases can offer a temporary relief to the patient and improve their range of motion.
So another thing to look at now is effusion. So if we bring the leg down like this, we're just looking for a generalized swelling or inflammation. What you want to do is um, with your hands kind of palpate medially and laterally. And if you see some fluid, you almost want to push it up and around the knee, bring it back down and see if you can displace that fluid. And if you do see a bit of swelling, you're going to get in there and palpate. And one of the things you're looking for is to make sure this isn't pitting edema. So in pitting edema, if I were to push in with my thumbs and then release, you would see a divot there. There'd still be an indentation. And that can uh, be indicative of maybe a serious underlying pathology, possibly related to the kidneys, for example. So that's something if you do notice, you want to refer your patient back to your medical doctor. So I'd like to mention a couple of points regarding osteoarthritis and stress fractures. So once we've examined the patient, we're also assessing for, you know, various conditions that actually might be pre-existing prior to them coming in. So if there is osteoarthritis going on, we'd evaluate the knees. Uh, you can see here, Lindsay's, I mean, she's quite active and strong, but let's say we had a patient here on the table where there was maybe some muscle atrophy, or perhaps uh, when we were examining the knee, a varus deformity. Uh, we'd get in here and, and palpate, once again, assessing for any crepitus or pain, joint line tenderness, you know, laterally and medially. All those can be indications of osteoarthritis. Uh, one of the things we'll often see in our patients uh, is that, you know, especially in sedentary patients because of work or lifestyle, is that their glutes will not be activating. And the glutes are quite important as shock absorbers, and they help to disperse forces throughout the whole kinetic chain. So if your glutes aren't working properly, it can cause a lot of knee problems. So one way that we'll assess the patient is uh, have you lie on your right side there, uh, Lindsay, is just, you know, simply looking at the gluteus medius. So we're gonna have you uh, get straight leg here, holding in that position, and I'm gonna push down, I want you to resist, okay? So here we go, we're pushing down, resist, resist. So as you can see here, Lindsay is quite strong. Yeah, okay, one more time. There we go, good, good. Nice. Yeah, often in most patients with knee problems, we'll actually see that leg drop right away and they're just not engaging those glutes. Another thing that we assess for, I'll go flat on your back here, which I mentioned earlier were tibial stress fractures. Now, if you have a runner who's out there putting on a lot of mileage and they're complaining of uh, medial shin pain, for example, if it were more of a tendinopathy and inflammation or restriction, that might be, you know, really sore that first kilometer or so, but then it's really going to start to feel better as they run. And it usually will respond to conservative care and treatment. However, if that patient is complaining of excruciating pain that just gets worse and worse and is not responding to anything, you'd want to suspect a stress fracture. And at that point, we'd refer the patient back to their medical doctor and hopefully have them have a bone scan. But how we assess it is we would palpate the tibia, looking for any deformities, any tenderness, any swelling. And then we, we do some percussion. So we tap along the length of the bone and we're looking for maybe a jump sign or some lingering pain, something that the patient lets us know is, is really sore. And another thing that we find really useful is vibration. So using a tuning fork, I'll just grab one from over here and uh, bring it back. So this is really simple yet really effective by putting vibration through the bone here, if there's any small stress fractures or injury, that vibration will elicit a painful response. So, just gonna put it here. Can you feel the vibration? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Any tenderness? Mm -hmm. No. So I can literally feel the, the vibration coming through as I do this, just along the whole length of the tibia. Great. So those are some key points when, when examining the knee. So uh, hopefully, that this video will be a great resource for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, reach out to us and check out all our other videos.